Yeah, I'll be glad we get to a position where we can do those. You've got to get the, uh, the right scope and the right focal reduction or uh, aperture to, to pull it all in. And mainly the skies. Let me stack a couple of frames here and see if it smooths the, uh, the background noise out. We'll pick back up here in just a second. Well, I believe that your image is the better image. Yeah, he's a new device. His, uh, that's the first time we've I think he's using extreme device. It's always... So why do you think we get the, the good results out of this one? This one just has the magnitude, the practical, the current magnitude that works for Yeah. With our chrome guys. That's the reason, I mean, I, uh, I tend to do better with the very bright objects because, I mean, they're just... Uh, the, the more light available, the better you can adjust them. With our light solution, that cuts down your contrast and your light and everything else of the object. Oh yeah, it, it hurts. It hurts your your viewing because you have to deal with fiber integration. If it works out like I'm expecting to up there, it, this 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 will be child's play. I mean, nothing, no problem, anytime. Uh, now you just pop and it'll pop. But what I'm looking for is the, the, the Thor helmet, some of the harder ones that way. It's never impossible that way. It makes me doubt myself whether, you know, whether it's me, if I'm, if I'm stupid, if I had to learn, or what uh, the deal is, or it's just our conditions. I think it's conditions, considering how well you're, the, the equipment's working with you and you're working with the equipment. If I can get that, why can't I get something to harder? Same routine on all the objects. It just, it just, it's missing the current magnitude that we need yeah. in these conditions. You know, that, that must be a seven or a seven, something low. Um, I think it really gets, and it, it makes me feel bad because everybody, I see all the other guys are doing the, uh, uh, and I can't do galaxies hardly at all because they're so faint. They're so small and light pollution really, 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 Make it nearly impossible here. And I've been doing long enough. I should be doing galaxy, but I, I've tried. I've tried a million times. Just don't have any luck with it. Man. Well, I tell you what, that the the setup is running like a top. Like a top yeah, I mean it's precision. You see how close everything is. Yeah. Precision timepiece. What way we can use that? I mean, you can put any kind of cord if you want to in the system. Man, they go right to it and feel pretty good about it. It's in that field of view right there. Well, at least it, it goes to show that uh, your future builds can have the same result with with the same consideration given this this equipment equipment and the, the, and the, the whole factor is I mean what's the better sky condition you're going to do? You're going to be able to go hunting for things and yes. seeing comments, taking well, pictures of those things that really interest you. What I'm thinking about it is. You know, I know how you used to say, once you go to these quarters, 
you can punch them in there, but it's not guaranteed your scope is going to go there. So you're guessing that where's it at and off is it in the flow view. So as it is, if the equipment is the same up there, as good as the skies are, you can dial it any number you want from here and, and know it's going to be in that field somewhere. Or in your DSO. That, that dependability, you know, if that is basically your viewing time. Yeah. Being undependable, if the equipment's undependable and you've got to go and put your hands on it every time you want to go to the mine or something, that's, right. that's your viewing time. That's what we were dealing with when we first started to set up, to tear down. That was viewing time going right out the window. I can be viewing. We'd be tired by the time we got set up. <laughs> and then we got to tear the shit down. <laughs> and everybody go through that. I understand that. But, uh, this is nice. It's going to be nice up there, too. I just hope I can make some kind of remote deal and you can dial in and, and, and do a, a CCZ work from up there. I'm going to have to go up there. That's why, I, that's why I'm, I'm making this regular schedule. I want to be coming over once a week, whether, whether I get a little, whether I get resistance or not, I'm just going to make it happen and put the time in. I will have a camera on your face the first time if you walk outside this dark and you see the uh, Milky Way away from in the end, from right. said how many fucking it is so many stars out there. You go, where is anything at? You don't know where anything is. There's so many fucking stars out there. It's gonna be awesome. I mean, every time I go up there at nighttime, when it's that clear, my mouth hits the ground. Uh, I don't know where nothing. So you had a body scope out there, yeah. I brought a little. Uh, oh, I brought a little eighty millimeter, but uh, man, shit is so small visually. Right, right, right. You need to get. You need your equipment. You need your setup. You, you need, need the mount cam because I mean, uh, chicken shit little mount. I mean, I'm down on the ground and the cactus is sticking to my. <laughs> I mean, it's dark. Oh, holy shit! You, you can't. It's like this. You can't see that one time. But I've been in darkness like that. You don't get into darkness like that every, all the time. I, I walked down the street one time, could not see your hand in front of your face. And it's like literally, you lose perception about which way you're going. Uh, I did, and... But in your case, you have the skies to show you which way, which way to go. Hey, G-Man, how are you, sir? Thanks for coming tonight, Norm. Hey, G-Man, we really appreciate everybody taking time to watch with us. All right, Norm, miss you, post, sir. Yeah, good night, and uh, thank you very much for joining us, Norm. Right now, we're enjoying this uh, Swan Nebula, one of, our, one of our better images of the night. Has enough magnitude to really shine in the telescope. I'm just pleased to, to be able to get some kind of object on a crummy weather night because uh, I really wasn't, I knew uh, this was available and everything, but uh, I wasn't sure what the thousands were going to do with so I'm just happy we got some kind of decent energy up tonight. Thank you, G-Man. Hey man, where did you say you were at? You were in Sydney, is that right? How's y'all's weather? Y'all start turning the corner as far as the heat, or is it still pretty warm for you guys? We're in winter. Winter, excuse me. Uh, so uh, the question is, has it started warming up yet for you guys? Rain, 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 rain. Uh, so they is that, is that good or bad? Is it normal or what? Transition. <laughs> we can't both be in summer. <laughs> Let's see, 16 hours, 16 hours, 16 hours. That's 11, 11 uh, 34 a.m. Plus uh, 4 is 3 p.m. Sunday afternoon. 3 p.m. Sunday afternoon. Hungy man.
we got to be careful what we wish for down here, G-Man. We start wishing for rain and everything. Then we get a, a freaking uh, hurricane and uh, get about a foot and a half in, in a two-day span. So. There's a car dealer doing a sale. When you buy a car and it rains 10 inches in September, you get a car for free. <laughs> All we need is one good storm. Anyway, you can bet, though, uh, they've looked at all the uh, weather records. <laughs> Probably the drought's about the wall. But we've got a hurricane. Well, was, that's, he's trying to do the same thing that freaking Matthew Smack did. He, he was picking teams who was going to win, and he gave away a lot of people in the furniture. He did some change in him. Excuse me. Mike's done for the night. He got the alignments working and a couple of good images. Good. Yeah, it's good to hear. I, I know it seems like when, when you're new at it and everything, it seems like about a million things to do all at one time. And uh, in, invariably, I mean, uh, the alignment, uh, you find out real quick uh, uh, how and why and when and everything else about the alignment. Uh, was that his first night uh, with the uh, entire package, or just the extreme, or what? Uh, for... uh, was it? Excuse me. Was he generally pleased with it, or? Yeah, that's a, that's a big jump there. Worse, that deal is probably learning the software too. I hope he had his recorder on or he's a fast note taker. <laughs> Well, as, as dumb as that sounds and everything, I know when we first started out, we had uh, a notebook we kept down on the table and we were steady writing notes down. Because uh, when, when you're in the heat of battle and everything, you don't remember all those final points you need to remember for the next uh, broadcast. And after a while, you do it a few million times, you, you kind of get used to it and, and, and remember those things you need to. Yep. You want to try to eat one more of it or are you just done for the night? No, one more scratch. We'll wrap through it at midnight and then sip it in. Alright. Well, Final three hours is a good, good amount. You speak for yourself there, Craig. <laughs> Actually, I'm a great speller. I'm just a really bad hyper. But I caught your drift anyway. <laughs> Alright guys, Francis made we're gonna try one more object, uh I'm gonna pull a full plug at that point, but uh have y'all got anything you want us to go to and, and keep in mind uh, the conditions we, we need some kind of bright object. Uh, we can go to uh, a glob or maybe a M57, M27 since it's on this west side now. Uh, or we can try one of the uh, M20 or M8 nebula that's in this area here. So if y'all got any input, I'd appreciate it. And what, what is M40, Craig? Uh, NGC 40. Well, we can do that. It's not a problem. Get the cloud out.